Hello, my name is Gurpreet Dillon. I'm a professor of information security at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. The topic of our discussion today is cybersecurity policy compliance. Ever since the um, Enron fiasco, compliance with regulations has become very, very important for companies and uh, cybersecurity policy compliance has risen up in the agenda of many of the chief information security officers. This is largely because the society as such and companies in general are becoming more data driven and data dependent and security of that data becomes very, very important and they are typically, if companies not doing it your, themselves in terms of uh, good housekeeping with respect to data security, there are other external agencies which are going to force you to do this and this is exactly what happened in the case of uh, uh, Enron as well because of the lack of governance practices that were there um, and the company itself was not uh, doing much, so obviously Sarbanes and Oxley came around and created legislation which forced companies to uh, operate in a certain manner. Uh, it's an interesting example of governance and externally mandated controls, um, but then because of the regulations again, there are all sorts of reporting mechanisms that have to be put in place and cybersecurity again um, because of all the pressures that are there. Uh, compliance with the policies has become very, very important. There are two aspects of compliance which need to be considered and thought about. First is the nature of policy itself. Um, many people comply or don't comply with a given security policy because uh, it hinders the way they do their work. Maybe the policy is flawed uh, to begin with. And the second element is the motivation aspect. Now, assuming that the policy is perfect, it has been well crafted, but Maybe it's the people, maybe they haven't been trained or they haven't been educated, they're not aware of the security policy or there are other motivational aspects that need to be thought about. So there are a multitude of factors which ensure compliance or no compliance uh, in a given environment and that's what we are going to be discussing in this particular uh, session. There are two elements uh, in compliance that need to be uh, thought carefully. One is uh, intention to comply with the security policy and then is the actual compliance. There's a big difference between intention to comply and compliance, actual compliance. When we start talking to people and say, do you intend complying? And more often than not, people say, yes, they do intend comply with the policy, but when you actually look at their behavior, they may not actually be complying. So what we did was over the last year or so, we started undertaking a bit of research at Virginia Commonwealth University to understand what converts people from intending to comply to actual compliance. And three factors came to the fore. And first was increased productivity. If a given task people felt was increasing their productivity, which is mandated by a given security policy, then they are certainly going to be complying because it's helping them enrich their work, uh, increase their productivity, and ensure that they're going to be successful. The second element that we found was of usability. Now that's a very interesting one because usable security is an area that has been really under-researched. A lot of people have not been thinking about it. Now if you have controls and policies and procedures within a given security policy which hinder the way in which people work or are very difficult to um, uh, convert or comply with, people are generally going to find a way of bypassing them. They're going to find an easier path uh, of least resistance and then they're going to do things um, accordingly and hence they are actually not complying largely because of the usability aspects. Now they do intend complying but the actual compliance uh, is low. And the third reason that we found was more historical. If a given policy has been around for a very long period of time and it doesn't matter how long, it could be one year, two years, three years, five years, ten years and it really depends upon the nature of the organization. If something has been around for a very long time people will generally comply. If historically people have been complying with something, they will keep on complying. Um, and in the literature, we generally call this uh, institutionalization of practices. And once something has been institutionalized and is normatively driven, then there is a higher chance of that particular rule or a policy uh, getting complied. The two elements as far as motivation is concerned which need to be thought about again. Um, one is extrinsic motivation and the second is intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is when people are finding indicators external to their task, it's external to themselves. 
when something is outside beyond uh, their realm of responsibility, which is ensuring or which is forcing them to do certain things in a certain way, that's extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic is more internal, what people really feel inside them, which is going to force them to comply or ensure compliance. Now, it's interesting to note that extrinsic um, uh, factors for compliance uh, generally are revolving around rewards and punishments. So if the top management in any organization is rewarding people for good behavior uh, or punishing them for bad behavior, that in itself ensures compliance of sorts. Um, so there's certainly one way of dealing with compliance, uh, which essentially means maybe a bad rule or bad regulation, but if there is an associated reward with complying with a certain regulation, then people are generally going to comply. Now, the rewards have, of course, got to be meaningful. If they're not meaningful, people are, again, not going to uh, be heeding to it. So uh, what people have generally been talking about is um, linking rewards and punishment together. So we are going to reward, but if you don't do it, we are going to punish you or reprimand you. So I think that's an interesting element, interesting debate that has to be um, thought about. Now, this is evidenced in um, the Sarbanes-Oxley compliance. You know, where does the buck stop in terms of Sarbanes-Oxley compliance? It's, it starts with the CEO or the CFO. So if there's no compliance, there's, there is a fear of being punished by, by the court of law and those people can actually end up in jail, in prison. So that is the punishment. But if you reward uh, someone adequately for compliance and there is certainly a financial reward for companies if they comply with a certain Sarbanes-Oxley uh, regulation or rules, uh, then obviously um, um, that's a different matter altogether then. So the reward and punishment is an interesting uh, element to consider as far as compliance or motivating people to comply uh, with uh, security policies. Intrinsic motivation to comply is, uh, as I said, very internal to individuals and um, they need to feel empowered that they, whatever they are doing is meaningful and they are contributing to the company. So feelings of contribution and feeling of competence are two uh, very important reasons why people uh, comply, which is more intrinsic in nature. So feeling of contribution is interesting because uh, if the task at hand where an individual feels that because of them certain things have been achieved, that is a feeling of contribution. And it's a great motivator, great intrinsic motivator for people to comply with rules. And in our research with respect to um, intrinsic motivation, we found uh, competence and contribution to be two very important factors which lead to intrinsic motivation. Our colleagues in psychology have also been studying um, intrinsic motivation, not just necessarily linked with uh, cybersecurity policies, but in general. And the literature tells us there are two kinds of uh, uh, empowerments that people generally deal with as far as uh, intrinsic motivation is concerned. Um, the first one is structural uh, empowerment, the second is um, psychological empowerment. So people have to feel psychologically empowered or structurally empowered uh, to ensure um, compliance with a given security policy. Um, so if you have structural empowerment and psychological empowerment, there is a chance of stronger cognitions of competence, meaning, impact, and choice. Uh, and this leads to greater motivation to invest energies and behaviors towards achieving that particular task. So it's an interesting uh, thing to consider structural empowerment and, um, and uh, psychological empowerment, ensuring intention to comply.